Are you afraid? This is a story that will not be found anywhere else online. I am female, and this happened to me when I was about 13 or 14 years old. At the time, I lived in a rural village and took a bus to get to high school and back each day. The bus stop was a bit further up my street. This one Friday morning, I was wearing a black cardigan instead of my regular school uniform sweater. I had that in my bag. The last thing I remember is waiting on the grassy area at the head of the road opposite to where the bus stops. The rest is just blank. I put together what happened from what people have told me. So apparently the bus arrived and we boarded as usual. Now there was this one girl who lived in the house where the bus stopped. She and a couple of her friends were friendly with the driver and normally sat up front and chatted with him. This girl was not waiting this day. So the driver asked for a volunteer to go to her door and knock and ask if she was coming to school today. None of her friends said anything. I must have been sitting near the front that day because the question fell to me. And being the lovely person that I am, I agreed to go and knock. As soon as I got off the bus, they all started calling to me. I remember that, it's not something I've been told. I remember not understanding why they were all looking at me and not being able to properly hear what they were saying. I am naturally a wallflower and go out of my way to avoid drawing attention to myself. So the fact that they were all looking at me and talking to me made me feel incredibly embarrassed and uncomfortable. So my solution was to walk around the tiny window next to the bus driver since I was already halfway there. The driver tried to tell me no, but I was already doing it. So I stepped out. A car I didn't know was there had been overtaking the bus. Even though I looked past the bus before venturing in front of it to cross, I hadn't seen it. I have always been very cautious about crossing the road. The car hit me. I must have been looking in that direction because I got fragments of glass lodged in my face. The car never stopped. I was in a coma for several days afterwards. I do have a memory of being in the ambulance though. The paramedic was, or appeared to be, shouting at me. He asked me if I could tell him where it hurt. I mumbled all over. He asked me to be more specific, and I replied my head and my leg. My shoulders hurt a bit too, but I don't remember how I conveyed that. The paramedic then informed me that he would have to cut off my cardigan. This distressed me greatly and I was upset about it having to be destroyed. It's funny to think about now. I didn't even think about the prospect of having serious injuries, but cared about my cardigan. I remember something small before I woke up too. You know those devices that doctors clamp on the end of one of your fingers, and is connected by wire to a machine? I don't know what it does, but I must have had one of those things on. I remember this annoying pinching on the end of my fingers, and I shook my hand until it fell off. The pinching then returned, and I started to shake it off again but was prevented. A nurse must have told me not to do it again, but I don't recall that. I don't know exactly when I woke up, but I do remember one night while I was in the hospital, and my dad was dozing in the chair next to my bed. I was picking the scabs on my face, and he told me off for doing it, warned that it will scar if I do that. Sorry, I know it's gross, but we all do it. I was unable to walk for a good period of time afterwards because my legs were so weak. It really hurt to stand up. I had to be taken out in a wheelchair whenever I left the house after I was discharged from the hospital. Amazingly though, I had no broken bones or serious injuries. The worst thing was a huge lump on the upper outside of my right thigh. Moved fat according to doctors. I guess it's like a giant bruise. I later had two rounds of surgery to take the excess fat out, followed by a tight bandage to try and stop it reforming. Today I still have a slight bump in that area, but it's extra sensitive when I lay on that side of my body. I also had tiny scars close to my left eye from the glass. I was apparently never checked for brain damage because I came back to them the same person. My mom's words. 
The fallout from that is that the bus driver understandably retired. I was off school for about a month after being hit. I remember going down to the police station because they wanted help tracking the driver. All I could tell them was I remembered nothing. The whole thing was just blank. I think the local newspaper must have run stories on it, because later the driver apparently handed themselves in. To this day, I have no idea what happened to the driver, or even if it was a man or a woman. I'm still curious about the driver though. The biggest impact the whole thing had on me was a lingering fear of big lorries and buses. Even though to my knowledge I was hit by a car. This fear has faded a bit over the years, but I am still overly cautious about crossing the street because of the accident. At some point while I was in that coma, I have a memory of a thought. I don't know how it came into my head or what was going on beforehand, but I made the decision not to give up. I wanted to live. I wanted to survive long enough to have children. That was a very strong thought that went through my mind. I shared this with my mom more recently, and she said to her knowledge that it was never serious. It's interesting to think that maybe if I wasn't such a strong person, I would not be here today. Did you like this video? Well, there's more where that came from. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Celestial Noor. I'll see you next time on Celestial Lore.